We've just pulled off the main road at this little village of Winslade and we've parked the car and we're going to walk up this track which will take us onto the dismantled railway and hopefully we'll be able to walk what's left of the line as far as Clidderston. So we're just approaching now the first signs of the actual railway here with this little tunnel and there's the Basingstoke and Alton Light Railway running on that embankment along the top here and it's lovely to see these structures still in situ and we're now going through the tunnel and up onto the track at some point Interestingly, this bridge, or what is really more of a tunnel, is the only fully intact structure that remains on the line.
Taking a turn to the right, we come across a building which attests to the strength of non-conformist worship, such as was to be found in rural communities in Hampshire in the 19th century. This is what remains of Winslade Congregational Chapel. At its opening in 1888, more than 100 people attended. A sermon based on the text, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, was preached, and Sankey's hymns were sung, such as the one you can hear now, recorded in 1899. Sadly, the coming of the railway at the turn of the century and the building of the huge embankment carrying the line past the chapel had the effect of cutting what had been described as the perfect little paradise off from its village community. Undaunted though, the worshippers saw this as an evangelistic opportunity and held open-air meetings outside the dwellings of the navvies employed upon the line. The chapel continued in use, but the First World War and dwindling congregations throughout the 1920s saw its eventual closure in 1931. Today it is used by local farmers as an occasional winter cattle food store. So we're just coming up now, up onto the old track bed for the first time. So we're now at the top of the embankment which carried the single track line and heading towards Clitterston. We're leaving the site of the old chapel behind and the line is passing through farmland but it's hard to see at the moment due to the line side trees. We do get the occasional glimpses of the wider landscape though. right on the embankment of the light railway you can see it if you follow the line of trees here and that sweeps round to the right you can see the telegraph poles which would have run alongside of the railway and that sweeps down into Clidderston I'll just zoom in a little bit here and I think the station for Buggles Kelly is over there and that line of trees there is Station Road which leads up to it off of the the main B road which is there. And of course this is from the 1937 film Oh Mr Porter which was Buggles Kelly was meant to be in Ireland and they, the film company took possession of the line in 1937 five years after it closed and they built Buggles Kelly at what is Clidderston station. So we're going to carry on walking down into Clitterston. So I've just left the main track bed here, down to the side of the railway. And here you can see one of the Southern Railway concrete posts, which were, were mass produced by the Southern Railway. It's still here, um, along the boundary of the line. And these were built, these were produced at, at um, Exmouth Junction down near Exeter where they had their cement works and there's an excellent book called um, what is it uh, New Southern Nouveau and it describes all the standard issue 
concrete components from platform edging, fencing, fence posts, uh, lamp posts, all, all manner of items made out of concrete by the Southern Railway. So here's one still in situ. In fact, fans of the O oh Mr Porter film will recognise this fence post as being identical to one that appeared in the scene with the postman, where he utters his famous line about time wasting. Planting a billion? I'm not burying anything, I'm planting a billion. You're wasting your time. Why? You won't be here when they come up. Hey, can't you get rid of him? Is he a relation of yours? No, but we both go after the same girl. Oh, ah, well, uh, let's ignore him. So the heavens have just opened, but we've just had to come off of the main railway, which is here, because it goes across farmland and there's no walkable track. So we're just working out how to get the track. Hey, it is two miles to Buckle Skelly from here. I can't help it. Well, how do I get there? You walk. Follow this road round the foot of Booker Hill. Pass the witches out. Drop down into Hell's Hollow. Well, I'll only ask you a simple question. And the station's right in front of you. You can't miss it. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Good night, sir. Good boy to you. Yeah. Well, that brief summer rain cloud seems to have passed overhead. So we've taken this path round the foot of Booker Hill. We've passed the witch's house. And it looks like we're about to descend down into Hell's Hollow. Yeah, you can see from the brow of that hill there we've walked along the line of trees which was the railway. We left the railway up onto this bridleway. The line crosses a field and then down an embankment here into Clitterston which you can just see here amongst that, those trees. So that was where the station and the siding development was and you can just see little bit of a white building there. Now that may be where the railway cottages are. So this is quite a good vantage point to see Buggles Kelly. I'm probably wasting my time. You're wasting your time. But anyway I'm here and we're looking down into Buggles Kelly and there's Bathingstoke in the distance. That's the route of the railway where we've been walking part of it. But to the right, across the field, is the bridle path that we've actually walked down. Because you can't walk across this section of the line. And we're now continuing down the edge of this field into Buggles Kelly, which is there. So we're getting closer to Buggles Kelly now, and I think you can see bit more clearly than where the station site is and you can see a clearing between those two groups of trees and there's a fir tree in the middle and we think that's roughly the location of the station uh, and those would be the trees that you see in the film that are actually on the platform um, so I'll probably show a clip from the film you'll be able to see that that's where we're heading to now So now we're back down right next to the railway, which is behind this hedge. And here are the telegraph poles, which run alongside the tracks. And we think that this, the site of the station is now on private property. So we're probably not going to be able to get 
really into where the station site is itself. But anyway, we're walking down into Kuzestan or Bugglesgelly just down here. just panning to the left of Clitterston now. And I'm looking at the proposed site for a massive housing development, all on this land here. 2,500 houses, which is going to extend all across here, up and over, as far as you can see basically, to that ridge in this beautiful rural landscape of North Hampshire. It's all going to be grubbed up for housing. So that's rather a shame, really. This map shows the extent of the proposed development, which has been put forward by Viscount Limington and the trustees of the Portsmouth Settled Estate. It's a site which will cover 302.77 hectares, a site the size of central Basingstoke. You can see that three quarters of the dismantled railway line and bridleways which I've been walking today would be obliterated forever. The action group Stand Up for the North Hampshire Downs was set up to protect the rural environment of North Hampshire. They say that the development would engulf the village of Clidderston and have a devastating effect on many surrounding villages and that the arable farmland should remain as farmland, playing an important role as it does in food production, flood protection and carbon capture, sustaining the environment and supporting biodiversity. going to apparently I've just been speaking to some locals and it's going to abut right up to Clidderston itself and which is why one of the houses is already on the market to be sold. Unfortunately it's not the house that contains the Buggles Kelly because that would be a wonderful site to excavate and redevelop and restore the station to its original glory and that would be a great attraction and preserving an iconic film location. So here I am now at a gap in the hedge and probably the closest spot I'm going to be able to get to the station site itself. You can see my approximate location marked on this map from 1909 with a red cross. As I mentioned earlier, the trees that you can see ran along the back of the single track platform in the distance. This photo shows the station as it looked in the early 1900s. The basic corrugated iron station structure was typical of many light railways. By the time the O Mr Porter film crew arrived, it was embellished to look even more dilapidated. I mentioned earlier the Southern Railway Concrete Works at Exmouth Junction, and this photo shows the mass concrete platforms at Clidderston, which had been constructed by the LSWR, who were an early adopter of concrete as a means of construction during the 1880s. Here you can also see the distinct change in ground level. The contours on the 1909 map show that the entire station site, including its siding, were in a shallow cutting which had subsequently been filled up to the level of the platform in order to create a private garden. Walking alongside the field, I now come to the location of the old wind pump, which is clearly shown on the 1909 map. Wind pumps were a fairly regular sight on railways at the end of the 19th and early 20th century, particularly in flatter, drier areas such as to be found here on the North Hampshire Downs. These are photographs of examples that were found on the Kent and East Sussex Light Railway at Robertsbridge and Tenterden Town. 
The wind pump here at Cliddesdon was built to a design of John Wallace Titt of Warminster and was known as the Simplex Geared Wind Engine. This is the only known photograph of the original wind pump that stood here on this site at Cliddesdon. All that remains of it today is its brick base. Now this is a gate into a private garden but you can just see through here this is the original structure of the pump house and in the film there was a windmill on the top of that which drove the pump house and that is still a structure in somebody's garden. The film contains only the occasional fleeting glimpse of the wind pump but you can see it here in the top right hand corner of this still from the film, just behind the signal box. There wasn't a breath of wind last night. Well, what's that going to do with me? Yet the sails of the windmill went round and round and round. Good day to you! I'm now standing at the north end of the station by the railway cottages on the appropriately named Station Road and I'm looking towards the level crossing where the railway crossed this road. Panning the camera across this field you can see where the line continued its journey northwards to Basingstoke, just on the other side of that hedgerow and line of trees. So I'm now at the point where the level crossing was, which can be seen in the film. The line crossed Station Road at this point and passed along the track bed here on a slightly raised embankment through what now appears to be a sort of paddock area. There are even old sleepers which have been used to make a raised bed. The line headed north to Basingstoke, curving round to the left in the direction of those trees in the distance. Moving around the corner in Station Road takes me to what may have been the entrance to the goods yard. The platform would have been behind the mature trees on the right, and the two sidings of the goods yard would have occupied this space, which, as you can see, has now been filled in to raise the ground level to provide for a garden. This is a spot in the film where complicated shunting manoeuvres were discussed by Will, Arbottle and Albert. Now look here, look, there's the carriage there, you see? 
Now, turn out your pockets, Albert. Come on. That's right. Now, that'll be, uh, that'll be the line of trucks there. Yeah, this, is this is a side in here, isn't it? Ah, it's the station. You're on the wrong side. Get over here. Now, now, see, where were we? Now, there's Bradson. These are the trucks, and that's the carriage. Now, the problem is to get it out. Well, if we had a crane, we could lift it out. If we had a crane, we... with some dynamite, we could blow it out. And you shut up, too. Now, I'm Gladstone. Now, I'm Gladstone. Well, we can't have two Gladstones. Here, you can be the railway carriage. If I can't be Gladstone, I'm not going to fly. That's the... Uh... Well, that more or less brings me to the end of this trip to rediscover Buggles Kelly. It's still there, clinging on, but this cutting and what remains of the line could all soon disappear beneath a sea of concrete if the housing development I mentioned earlier gets the go-ahead. Please consider signing the petition at the link shown on the screen now and help to preserve and protect this beautiful rural part of North Hampshire. Stay tuned for part two when I'll be taking a closer look at the Buggles Kelly 00 gauge wagons which you saw at the start of this video and which have been produced by the Will Hay Appreciation Society. Until then, thank you for watching and bye for now.